Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! And this is Paul Cooney with Mark Guidi, the last of the one hour specials this summer. Mark, it's the final friendly for the defending champion Celtic tonight. He's won 22 medals, 11 of them titles, James Forrest. Testimonial tonight, Atletico Bilbao, 7.30. Yeah, and, and uh, well deserved. Uh, I think it's more than 50,000 is going to be inside Celtic yeah. Park um, tonight. A wonderful turnout for, for a player who has no ego, Paul, but has delivered time and time again. Uh, met James a few times. Um, very talented footballer. Very humble person and uh, a credit to himself and his family and he deserves this big turnout tonight. 467 games. Remarkable. If you're going to the game, give us a call. 08 08 17 17 700. Celtic kick off the campaign. Cinch Premiership starts lunchtime on Saturday. Celtic against uh, Ross County and it's going to be the unfurling of the flag. It's going to be James Forrest. Nice touch. It is, yeah. And, and again, you know, it's, it's few and far between now. Uh, players who get... Testimonials, Carl McGregor may well be next, um, of course. But yeah, James Forrest, uh, enjoy the moment, share it with his his family, share it with the Celtic supporters. Atletico Bilbao will come there and we'll make a game of it, Paul. And it's a first chance for the Celtic supporters. Well, a lot of them would have been in Dublin at the weekend for the Wales game, but to see them in action at Celtic Park, you know, three or four new signings possibly going to be um, involved. So yeah, it'll be a good occasion tonight at Celtic Park. And the final game, before you say, before the... Uh, unfurl the flag on Saturday lunchtime. Some of the Rangers fans were at Ibrox for an open training session today and they saw Conor Goldson back training. Yeah, Conor Goldson is um, you know, a stalwart at the back um, for, for Rangers. Um, there's, there's been a, a shout, Paul, that Stephen Gerrard may be interested in taking him um, to Saudi Arabia. I don't know really, to be honest, if there's anything in that um, at the moment, but certainly Stephen Gerrard rated um, Goldson um, highly, but Rangers would not want to lose um, Conor Goldson, that's for sure. Michael Bull sees him as um, you know part of the long-term plan. For sure, because arguably they will need more defenders. Balligan's come in, but surely he's in as cover. Uh, John Souter, you'd love to think that he could go the whole course, and maybe he can this season. Yeah. But- but you would expect more to come in. Yeah, uh, they've got Sterling who who's yeah. injured. I know they they, they they think very highly of uh, of Sterling. Wonderful pace. Um, you can play in the right back area or, or um, in a back three um, as well. And as you say about Jordan Souter, you know, big season for him at, at club level. He was very very unlucky last season in, in terms of you know injuries uh, ravaged um, him in terms of what he could do for Rangers. But a big season for Rangers and for John as well to to make sure he stays involved. At the international set up for, for Steve Clark because we've got a massive 11 months sure ahead have. of us. It's going to be some season and it starts this week. All the talking is just about over. Rangers kick off the campaign uh, later on 5.15 on Saturday at Rugby Park. I'll tell you who's in charge of the two games. It's going to be Willie Collum in charge at Rugby Park and Nick Walsh in charge of Celtic against Ross County. Shall we take some calls? You ready, Mark? Absolutely, looking forward to it. 08 08 17 17 700 or join the conversation at Go Football Show. First up, from the Gorbals, it's Gary. Good evening, Gary. Evening, Paul. Evening, Mark. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? You're looking forward to... you going to the match tonight? Yeah, yeah. All, all set to go uh, very soon. Um, one of one of our own, basically. You know, a, a one-man... Uh, a one-club man, rather. Um, and I, I really hope Celtic Park is, is packed out for it because it, it really should be the... You know, we're we're famous for like kind of losing our hearts to players like Jota, managers like yeah. Ange, mm-hmm. who kind of come and go. They're ten a penny. They're, they're special. They give us special moments, um, as they have done over the last few seasons. But none more so than players like James Forrest and Callum McGregor. You know, who who have just shown so much loyalty to the club. And and as I say, I hope the Celtic fans turn out in numbers tonight. That's a great point, Mark, isn't it? Because yeah. he is a bit of an unsung hero. Despite yeah. 11 titles, is it six Scottish Cups and five League Cups? Yeah, and, and part of all the treble um, successes, yeah. the quadruple um, treble, you know, you think again, um, what must be exciting for the Celtic players and every Celtic fan, Paul, is you look at the, the, the James Forrest 
that Brendan Rodgers inherited and what he turned him into for two seasons. He was outstanding and played in a number 10 role sometimes as well, came inside um, and played a, you know, a real big part in the success of that in a couple of years. And uh, it's right, you know, you, your, your jotters are, yeah. are sexy and, and they get the headlines and stuff like that, whereas James just gets on with his, his business, but he's, he's, he's done it over a period since, and credit to Neil Lennon. He identified him in the Celtic reserves, nurtured him as soon as Neil got the job permanently after Tony Mowbray. He got James Forrest um, involved and James has, has never looked back. So yeah, I, I mean Celtic Park will be packed tonight. There will be over 50,000 um, there. Let's hope it's, it hits the 60. Let's hope it's absolutely uh, every seat taken. And um, you know it's a chance to see the, a couple of the new signings, yeah. see Brendan Rodgers back at Celtic Park the first time in a game. And obviously the most important thing, paying tribute to James Forrest. Gary, you're looking forward to seeing the Rocky for the first time? Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see that the most of the new players. Hopefully, we get a, a good look at all of them. I'd, I'd imagine it, that Brendan Rodgers will probably kind of go with, or, or, or very least finish with the team that he's going to probably start with on Saturday yeah. uh, against Ross County. Um, and I've, I'm not too sure what to expect from the new guys. I, I've seen a wee bit of them on Saturday against uh, when we played Wolves. But, you know, um, listen, if, if we can slot in well, my, my worry is for Scar Stalfield in terms of this, you know, this ongoing rumour that, that he might be leaving the club kind of thing because we really need to solidify that defence like we did last season, him and Carter Vickers at the back. Yeah, because you wouldn't have wanted, you wouldn't have expected to start the game at the weekend with Liam Scales, for example, and that's yeah. nothing against him, yeah. but it looks as though he might go back to Aberdeen or Stephen Welsh at right back. Yeah, um, I would, Gary, I certainly wouldn't be concerned about rumours. And if uh, Carol Starfield is going to go, then he'll go. You know, if the club could get yeah. a fee, a fee that suits them, and they might have somebody else lined up. But at the moment, don't be, don't concern yourself with rumours. Not <laughs> this time. There's still a month to the transfer window to go, so there's plenty to come. Uh, believe me so look, don't be concerned about that Carol Starfelt Starfelt is a right good Celtic player he's really come on he's played a big part uh, in what happened the success under um, Ange Postecoglou and if something else happens then fair enough but at the moment we'll just crack on and, and see how he, he gets on let's say uh, Nwaki Carter Vickers isn't he far away Paul um, as well and you know what a boost it'll be to, to Celtic to get um, Cameron Carter Vickers back because with the greatest respect to all the other players at the club he is by far the best defender at the club and for me he is also the best defender in Scottish football best in Scotland Mark you know loads of journalists and people have made careers of rumours over the years some great journalists as well it's part of the thing keeps it all going for all of us but, but that's a great point you make let's wait to see what happens there Gary do you expect a few more signings I think the Celtic fans do we'll hear a bit from Brendan Rodgers but what's your thinking on it another striker yeah I'd, I'd like to see another striker come in um, you know I think we've, we've still to see the best of all up front and uh, obviously uh, Tilly own players like that you know they, they can adapt as forwards into strikers kind of thing so um, yeah more more along the back line I think uh, I would like to see a striker come in but I think across the back line maybe another centre back and possibly another left back What about the goalkeeping position? What do you feel Gary? Well do you know what yeah. like I, I think there's a lot of bad press against Joe Harper now for the Celtic fans you know and we all always bang on the Celtic fans about loyalty players don't show loyalty to the club well Joe Hart's shown loyalty to Celtic and, and I, I just feel he's getting very very hard done to. for a million pound uh, signing he's been tremendous he's been absolutely tremendous and yeah like listen he's, he's getting on in years but I, I don't think there's any real reason to worry this season I think maybe in January you could probably start looking at, at bringing in a a top class keeper to replace him but I, I have no worry about Joe Hart for, for this season to be fair Mark? No, I, I've no worry about him either I know obviously he didn't cover himself in glory with the, with the goal um, against Wills at the weekend and uh, against Yokohama um, a couple of weeks ago um, in Japan but uh, you know I, I pretty much agree with what Gary says I've supported Joe Hart he's a top quality goalkeeper and what you got to do in a situation like this Paul you've got to judge the, what Brendan Rodgers feels now if Brendan yeah. Rodgers feels he needs to get a goal they'll be trying to get one in the background they've, they've been linked with one or two yeah. top goalkeepers now whether they can go and get him or not is, a, is another story but there's no point in just signing a goalie for the sake of it and by the way let's not forget for every mistake that Joe Hart's made he's probably made four or five crackers and, and when they yeah. get to a certain age 
cracking saves that is when they get to a certain age it was the same with Alan McGregor the last couple of years as soon as he made them say oh that's it he's passed it he's that age is just a number it is it's just a number particularly for a goalie so oh, wait and see if Celtic go and sign somebody and um, you know don't underestimate how important goalkeepers are and if you do find one at the 7-8 million quid mark and you feel that he can make a huge difference to, to the, the back line of your team then I would go and pay it as much as I would pay 8 million pounds for a striker and on your point about the striker so Kyogo's there and O's there. Um, now, if you bring in a third striker, how do you keep him happy if you only play one up top? And if you think back to Brendan Rodgers' first time at the club, he was asked to bring in a third striker or a fourth striker. He says, but I only play one up top. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. So how do, unless you think somebody's going to be injured or out long term, you certainly don't spend a lot of money on a third striker. And I agree, Kyogo's different class, as we know. And I like oh, I like the look of him. He gives the Celtic side something different when he comes on. He's different from Kyogo. Um, so I don't see a rush to sign a new striker. And certainly if they do, I don't think you're paying big money for him. Gary, what do you feel about across the city and Rangers signings? Eight so far. It looks as though Sefuentes. I see at the training day, the manager, Michael Beale, said, watch uh, the airport for the next 48 hours. So could someone else be coming in? And Barry on this programme on Monday said there's at least one more to come. What do you feel? Yeah, I think I think they're definitely listen. They had to they had to do something for for this season coming. You know, I think Cantwell, if he can start doing his talking on the pitch, <laughs> then uh, you know a bit of a TikTok star. But if he can start doing his talking on the pitch, and I believe he Rangers have got a really good player for the money that they paid for him. Um, you know, Danilo's stats talk for themselves. Jane, if if he can replicate that, but it's all ifs and buts at this stage. You know, it's it's not players that I know a great deal about. Um, you know, I think, was it the boy Sterling is, you know, is, yeah. is um, I, th I think a few loan moves he, he's had in his career. I think Butland will be a decent signing for them. Um, you know, but I think that they're, they're still going to miss that presence that Ryan Kent had at one point and Morelos had at one point. I know they didn't have great seasons last yeah. year, but it's, it's now they've got to replicate what they've give, given kind of thing. And, and I do think it'll be a lot closer than it has been. Do you think? Um, probably yeah. over yeah. the... Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I think Rangers were, were close last year in, in getting a cup. You know, we got to the cup final, cup semi-final. Um, I don't see us doing a treble, but listen, bread and butter, go and win the league. And then and then I'm perfectly happy with that. You know, see if you look at the signings in, in both clubs, obviously both of Rangers have, they've, they've signed a lot more players because they had to it was a bigger turnaround in the squad but Gary says they're a bit of an unknown with Rangers and, a, and it's the same with Celtic Paul and that's the thing there's no household names the Jack Butlin we know about um, but what's he going to be like because he's not played first team football for two years regular first team football it was a bit like Joe Hart Joe Hart was a household name but he hadn't played regular football for a couple of years so you didn't really know what you yeah. were getting other than the fact that five or six years ago he was very good and, mm. and he was England's number one yeah. so I mean, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, out with Joe Hart, and I come, when was the last time Celtic or Rangers signed what we would term as a household name, as in somebody are watching on UK football week in, week out, that we know, Aaron Ramsey. Yeah, sure. Didn't he work? Yeah. Didn't he work? Yeah, I mean, so that, that's, that, the, thing, that's the thing about Celtic did. and Rangers players that must be really exciting for the whole city, Paul, sure. um, particularly getting this weekend when the league action starts. They are pretty much all unknown. They might all do well or they might not. They're not coming here with fantastic pedigrees with 200 first-team games under their belts and 50 or 60 goals at a high, high level. So they've signed a few unknowns, which I think is good. It's good to of see course, and it's good yeah. to see how it all um, works out. Because remember a few years ago, it would be the Craig Bellamy's coming to yeah. town. For example, Robbie you know, Bobby Keane. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, but now they can go to the Middle East, you know, the equivalents, the big names. The, day, the, the days of the big names coming up here at 32, 33 may yeah. have gone. But yeah. the excitement, as you say, is, well, nobody knew Hitati yeah. you know, a couple of years ago. Hitati, you look at Brend, um, Ange Postacoglu's first signing spell, first wave, Abada, yeah. Jota, Carter Vickers. Didn't they know anything with Pat mm -hmm. James McCarthy? Didn't they know anything? Bear the bye. Never heard of him. Yeah. You know, so you look at guys like that, Juranovic, no, yep. don't know much about him. You look at Rangers five or six signings this summer, don't know much about them at all. So that that that's the good thing which makes it really exciting, but particularly for the Rangers players, bear in mind this time next week, we're going to go into Champions League qualifiers, they need to hit the ground running and the manager needs to find partnerships 
that are going to work because they've had one or two shaky moments at the back as well in the past couple of games and they need to get that right especially when you're going to such a tough place as uh, Rugby Park on Saturday night. Here's a bit from Brendan Rodgers saying, you know, naturally he's looking, yep, it was a treble last season, but he thinks the team can improve. We want to improve the squad. I think everyone looks and thinks that we might be bringing in a 15, 20 million pound player. Now, the reality is that that won't be the case. Uh, it's, it's not where the, the club is based on, but, but that doesn't mean there's not talented players out there that we want. Um, so there's still quite a way in the, to go in, in, the, in the window. So we'll look to improve the squad again and continue with that. We've done a lot of early business, which has been great. That allows the players to come in and settle. And of course, we want to do some more. So, um, but I'm quite calm in that. And uh, as I said, the players that we have are working very well and we'll look to uh, bring some more in to help them. Two hours and 10 minutes to go, Gary, to kick off. What kind of reception will the manager get? I think, well, I would hope he'd, he'd get a, a very good one. Um, you know, I think obviously this is the, the testing ground for Saturday. I, I think it was, I can't remember who it was I was listening to. It says, you know, it doesn't matter what's went on in the past, what's happened in the past. All we Celtic fans, as of Saturday, need to start pulling in the same direction. You know, you can have opinions on the manager and what happened when he left the last time. But, you know, we've all got to be pulling in the same direction, singing off the same hymn sheet. And, you know, we've all just got to get behind the team because that's the only way we're going to go forward. And as for, like, the, you know, the 15, 20 million pound marquee yeah. signings, and, you know, I think they are far, they are long gone. And the Celtic fans don't really want, they don't, are no desperate to see a 15, 20 million pound player. Yeah. What they want to see is very good, really talented players coming in. And I don't care if it costs 15 million or 150 grand. As long as they can do the business on the pitch for Celtic, then I'm perfectly happy with that. I think that's well summarised, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've, you've summed it up well there, uh, Gary. Certainly 15 won't be happening. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. The, the, thing, the good thing for Celtic is if they see a player that really catches their eye and he costs nine or ten, they have the financial muscle to yeah. go and do it. That That's the yeah. thing that they have in the locker. But quite rightly, Brendan Rodgers and the board, they won't spend just for the sake of it. And on the point tonight, and, and I'm forgetting it's Brendan Rodgers' first game back at Celtic Park as well as manager, I hope it gets a wonderful reception from the Celtic fans. And I think it would be it would be a shocker if he didn't, if the whole of Celtic Park wasn't united uh, tonight behind the new manager. Mark, you have to forgive him, Gary, because he's just off a flight back from Washington. <laughs> you were over there, well, you, you took in Villa at the weekend. Yep, yeah, I was over for yeah. a few days, yeah, and uh, watched uh, Aston Villa against... Um, Brentford three each yeah. Um, yeah. Game, really good nice. game um, and uh, yeah it was good great city Paul enjoyed it how was John again? yeah he was in good yeah. form yeah he was in good form yeah he, uh, he played well captain the team played for an hour then then came off but you know you and I Emery absolutely loves him and he's uh, buzzing with the Aston Villa skipper buzzing for the new season and what a big year for John and Scotland hopefully mm. we hope this time next yeah. year we'll have been to well, Germany yeah and of course Aaron yeah. Hickey's playing for Brentford yeah. as well so so he's there then it was Chelsea and Fulham after so you know Hickey's a massive player for Scotland Paul he, he's Hickey the field down the road and within the mm. Scotland camp Hickey's going to be a superstar an absolute superstar I hear you saying yes Gary you agree yeah absolutely yeah. totally agree I think that, that spell he's had in Italy um, mm. you know, and, and now come over to Brentford who have done really well in the Premier League so far you know funnily enough I was in, I was in America myself I was in Florida um, for, for a few weeks and, and took in one of the MLS games oh, at wow. Orlando City I thought your accent um, had changed a wee bit I thought that's not a Gorbals <laughs> accent <laughs> <laughs> well, which one did you take in just before we go uh, Orlando City and Chicago Fire do you know what I've actually <laughs> um, I managed to get one of the players jerseys after the game so oh, did you? Yeah. I got a soft spot for the for Orlando City now fantastic so kind of looking out for the results Gary, enjoy the match tonight. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! Go Radio Football Show, Paul Cooney, Mark Quay, and we're here every evening now with Global Eco Energy. Tomorrow night, it's the John Harson, the big two, or two of the big ones, John Harson. And Barry Ferguson, you know then that, what, Mark? Four days to go to kick off. It's been one of these summers, though, isn't it? I know that the weather's not great at the moment, but given there wasn't any major tournament, apart from the Women's World Cup, but we're not there, that um, you've missed it, haven't you? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. But I think, you know, even though there's a, a month to go of the yeah. transfer window, um, 
I think there's been some exciting uh, movement and we've said it's a lot of players that we don't enter about you know doing research on trying to work out how they'll, yep. they'll, they'll do etc etc but you know obviously there was a big Jota move at 25 million quid there was Ange Postecoglou leaving Brendan Rodgers coming in and then you know Rangers going out and, and doing what they said they would do and, and bringing in uh, you know plenty of players um, early in the window to, to give them time to settle in and obviously Paul this time next week as well we're into Champions League qualifiers which are huge huge occasions game changers of course game yeah. changers for Rangers to get into the Champions League financially and Genk and Servette 1-1 isn't it and they one, play one. tomorrow night so yeah. Rangers will find out who they're up against and it comes really quickly and remember last year it was tough for them at the beginning mm. Union San Galwa and then against PSV the first leg was tough and then one of the best performances of the season yeah and it, and it looked so good for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst yeah. and I think that right okay there's, there's a real um, challenge going to come from Rangers or they're, they're going to take Celtic all the way it's going to be a nail biter and it never happened as I said Paul I think there was a four day period where it just collapsed for Van Bronckhorst and, and the players that was losing at Celtic Park and then in the Amsterdam Arena back to back losing heavily both games and really when you look at it now Rangers didn't recover from that and unfortunately Giovanni Van Bronckhorst lost his job Danilo Deserves Lammers Sterling Dowell mm. Butland Balogun and Sima so far and Sifuentes the deal is done mm -hmm. and it sounds as though he'll be here soon Barry Ferguson said there'll be at least one more in, not including Sifuentes here is someone who's been on the socials saying Michael Beale needs to fix the left side of the defence. There needs to be outgoings and then strengthen. Hopefully that happens before the window closes, so that's 31 days away. Ben Davies, he says, is not good enough. Neither is Borna Barisic. Yilmaz is still unknown over the course, so a quality challenger at left-back would be a smart move. He says, if we can fix this, we can have a real chance to win the league. Danilo will tear it up for us, as will Cantwell, Sifuentes, Raskin, and Lammers so that's uh, come in one of the many messages what do you think of what he's saying there first of all the defence well, yeah, yeah I mean they, they do need to sort it out Paul I mean I, I'd only seen him you know maybe four or five times but I, I have liked the look mm -hmm. of Yomaz but only Michael Beale will know or only Michael Beale will have an opinion is Yomaz good enough in that area or am I better with Barisic or do I need somebody else and whatever the answer to that may be it needs to be better than what they've had and that's why so many changes were needed because what they've had hasn't been good enough because they've been a distance away from Celtic for two years now. Only won one old firm game last season, Paul. That was a game that was the last one this season when Celtic already had the title um, wrapped up. So that tells you its own story. Competitively, competitively, in the league games and in the two cup competitions, Rangers couldn't beat Celtic. What does that tell you? it tells you they're not good, not enough. good enough what they yeah. have isn't good enough to beat the current champions to beat the current benchmark and therefore you've got to go out and get better players and the ones that you have that you keep on you've got to improve them and that's all the challenge for Michael Beale and his coaching staff with the ultimate aim of overturning Celtic in the next 38 league games that starts on Saturday afternoon if you're unable to do that given the amount of new players that are in, given the spend that the board have given to the manager, then he may well lose his job and he knows that. That is the bottom line and the the the, the person on social media who's said yeah. that in is, is absolutely yeah. spot on. Ben Davis, does he get up well, on last season's show? No, he's not. Are you going to win a title with Ben Davis as your centre-half? I don't think so. So, therefore, you've got to go and find better. How would you start this weekend? So, at Rugby Park, what's the defensive line up for Rangers assuming they're fit so Conor Goldson if he's fit and he's back in training yeah um, I, 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 normally if if it was at Ibrox Paul I, I would be saying just put Conor Goldson in and oh. get him even if you can get an hour out, out of him with the first leg of the Champions League qualifying the fact that it's on Astro Tuff at Kilmarnock I'm not quite sure again that have a decision but you know, it might just be say, look, we need you. We're just going to have to put you in there at centre half. And I think he's the type of guy that would that would embrace that and say, yeah, uh, for for sure. Tavernier, um, Suter picks some set, and if Suter's fit, uh, but the real I think Sterling's still a bit. Yeah, he didn't go. play much. Yeah, he came so, on for. But we, but we saw next to nothing. Sterling again with another four or five days training under his belt. Then Sterling, uh, Paul, got fantastic pace. So that's a real asset to have in your defensive. Um, line up now, again I don't know because I thought um, earlier in the summer the way that Michael Beale might have been thinking about certainly giving himself a, a, an option to play a back three when you've got yeah. Goldson, Suter and, and, and Sterling 
uh, it can give you that option with a more attack so, so, so for example if he doesn't think Barisic and Neil Maz, then he could put a more naturally attack minded player up and down that, that uh, left hand side in a kind of wing back role so you never know he might still have a, a tweak or two um, to make but certainly the, the left back area appears to be a, a concern I know a lot of Rangers fans are asking what's going to happen to Borna Barisic is it time for him to move um, he's been great for Rangers but the last two years not as good as he was what three or four years ago yeah. and also Yilmaz they're just not too sure I see Todd Cantwell is on social media today a rallying call to the Rangers fans saying let's fight for everything this season and I heard Gary the Celtic fan earlier mentioning that so oh, yeah. Paul that we know in this part of the world and Todd, Todd Cantwell's been here for six months now yeah. so he should know as well that's absolute minimum that you go and fight for it if you're not going <laughs> yeah. to fight for it then sure. you shouldn't be putting the jails on you shouldn't be at the club it's, Reigns, it's not about fighting for it. It's about winning it. It's about turning these reality comments or videos or whatever it is he does on there <laughs> and, and turning it into reality at the end of the season where come May that you are watching James Tavernier hold the, 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 the Premiership trophy rather than watching Callum McGregor do it. So that's what it's all about. The, the fight, yeah, that's a minimum. That's got to be a gimme. It's about having the quality and having the mentality mm-hmm. over 38 games to overcome a Celtic team and in the past couple of years Rangers haven't managed to do that and they need to correct it if, if they want to all uh, stay on side with the Rangers supporters One of the good things in the summer Marcus we've had no arguments about VAR although you saw in a couple of the games recently some of the friendlies that VAR for example Wills probably wouldn't have had a, a penalty at the weekend so VAR will be back this weekend in the Premiership um, what changes would you like to see this year given that we've had our first what six months of it a uh, well I mean Without anything um, specific coming to mind right away, Paul, just in general terms, um, that our referees are are, are, are better and VAR's better and, and there's more consistency. I think the, the word that we probably heard a lot from managers at full-time last season was uh, a lack of consistency. Well, some referees and some VAR were given things and after, you know, and speed it up as well. Three, four, five minutes to, to, to make a decision. No way. It's like a um, committee meeting going yeah, on, isn't it's it? Just, yeah, it's just... No good enough. And also as well, um, and only if it's right, but no pals act. What do you mean? If you're, if you're no. called to the screen, if you're the match referee on the pitch and you're called to the screen by the VAR official, don't just automatically, well, because he's called me to the screen, I need to give the decision. You know, if you still feel that you're right, then stand by yourself. And if, if you're overturning the guy, the guy in the van is only there to help. The guy who's on the field is a guy who should be making... The, the decisions and if he needs the help of VAR fine but don't don't just be thinking um, that you have to give the decision as soon as VAR calls you to over over to the screen but certainly just more consistency Paul it wasn't it wasn't good though. I mean I can remember we're on here every yeah. Monday night yeah me you and Barry and every Monday night we were dominating the programme with VAR yeah. with our referees four weeks out of five we were dominated by VAR and some of the shockers yeah. that we had on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Well, we'll be back on Monday night as well, the three of us, but let's hope there's not too much on VAR and GAR. Since I last saw you as well, so Hibs went into Europe with great hopes to Andorra. Should yeah. have been a gimme. You know the story, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, luckily, from you know a Scottish point of view, John Newell got that goal right at the end, so 2-1. And you saw what happened afterwards on social media. They were getting pelters from the 200 Hibs fans yeah. and the manager saying, calm down. Um, I see today, Hibs are going to pay Rosa 700 grand for a new striking a partnership for Martin Boyle when he's back is Dylan Venti. Yeah. Um, so he was attracting attention from Coventry, Sunderland, Palermo maybe, and Pisa. They, big they, money, Paul. It is, isn't uh, it? It's a massive amount of money it's for Hibs. a big Hibs. signal from yeah, the board. It is, you know, and credit uh, to them. You know, Ron Gordon's family have said that they'll, they'll carry on what, what Ron had started and they appear to be going down that direction. You may also have the hand of the, the new... Um, so head of recruitment and technical yeah. director mm-hmm. Brian McDermott yeah. the, the old uh, Reading manager um, in there who's got good contacts um, all around uh, Europe so certainly you want Hibs to go and get the it is embarrassing to, 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 to lose that game but I get it but these European ties are over two legs yeah. so as long as Hibs get through if they get knocked out it's a different story it's a different conversation but as long as they get through over the 180 minutes, and I'm sure they will. It's the Red Imps one or Niederhorn, isn't it? Exactly. It's happened to all of them. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so so you're saying, can't you agree with Lee Johnson in this instance? Right, wait a minute. Yeah, give of us, course it's concerning, yeah, sure. but it's over 180 minutes. It wasn't a one-off tie. So just, you know, relax, and, and obviously 
you've got every right to be concerned, every right to be disappointed because you've paid your money to go and support your team and, and they shouldn't be losing that kind of game. But give them, the manager and the players, the opportunity to overturn the Easter Road. I see today that uh, David Martindale, the manager, hugely successful and long running. That's what, three years now he's been in charge yeah. there, just under three years. He said, I'm not looking forward to the new season. If I'm sacked, I'll be on a building site within days. Now, I'm hoping there's tongue in cheek there. He's been such a part of things there. Uh, what do you feel about David Martindale's. Uh, and are you worried about some of the managers? Well, Paul, well, well, I think. It, um, We'll probably see what well, over the course of the next 12 months, at, at least three of our top flight managers will lose their job. I mean, if you look at last season, three Robbie Nielsen, yep. Jim Goodwin, Callum Graham Davidson, sure. Graham Alexander, Graham Alexander right on, the, on the eve of the yeah. season, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, yeah. I think it was, was it half the managers yeah. they did. Um, yeah. lost their jobs. Yep. So you can say for, uh, not Goodwin. that it gives you any pleasure to see it, but I think at, at least three managers in our top wow. flight will lose their jobs in the next 10 months. We'll come back to that in a moment or two let's go on the lines in the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy and Paul is on the line in Kirk and Tillich, a Celtic fan good evening Paul yeah hi good evening guys how are you doing hi good hi, thanks Paul. what's in your mind tonight uh, it's just the uh, looking forward to the, the start of the, the new season at the weekend uh, I think in some ways it's, it's, it's a, bit, a bit different to I thought it was going to be uh, for, across the the road, I see that much the same thing happens for Rangers uh, every season. I think they're quite used to the, the bring in a, a rake of players, uh, and they're used to that kind of thing. Uh, with us, I think that Brendan Rodgers came in, uh, accepted it, wasn't overly happy with it, but uh, accepted it for the for his his, his coaching ability alone, kind of thing. No, no, the no harm in the way that he left the club, but uh, I still think that it's it's difficult to listen to him speaking, and I think he knows that as well. He's not done a lot of interviews, uh, and from from friends I mean I speak to, he's he's still he's not getting any goodwill in the bank, uh, so I think if he starts well and gets his own, I, I'm honestly not interested in the guy. As long as he makes us better, if he makes us better in Europe, I'm sure this will ease off. But uh, I don't think there is a lot of goodwill for Brendan Rodgers, to be honest. And if he doesn't hit the, if he doesn't get the results in, uh, I think that I'm not saying he'll get the bullets straight away of that, but uh, he'll need to be on his game, I think, because he's he's coming back to a totally different environment. Mark, I mean, well, you know, Brendan Rodgers isn't here to to um, to get and have dinner with Celtic supporters or, or, or to get and spend the night with him. He's here to win football games. Mm-hmm. He's here to make players better, win football games, and make the Celtic fans happy at the right moments when you get into cup finals and when the, the league championship is handed out next May. And obviously, you've got you've got the Champions League nights, and you want to go and get a couple of wins and improve on the way it's been uh, the past few years. There might be, um, I dare say, there will be some Celtic fans that they won't have a lot of a goodwill in the bank for him. But, they say, he's there to to go and do a job as a manager of the club. Um, I think it's an outstanding appointment. I've said that. I think he's an upgrade on on um, Ange Postacoglu. Because I think we're a number of Celtic fans and they, they haven't got past the point yet because there's not been competitive games. They only remember the Brendan Rodgers that left the club in the February or March yeah. of his third season. And at the time, I'd, I understood why he left. I got it. And I could absolutely see why he did leave. And, mm-hmm. and for me, I didn't have a problem. On a professional level, you could move jobs. I didn't have a problem with it. It was unfortunate for Celtic. I get that. But knowing some of the circumstances, I didn't have a problem with it. But when you think back to his first two years, he won seven trophies out of seven. And as I said tonight in the programme about James Forrest, look at the James Forrest he inherited to what he turned into. Scott Brown, Callum McGregor, Kieran Tierney the list goes on he's signing Scott Sinclair sensational play of the year uh, right. in, his, in his first season so you think back to all of that and if you take away Brendan Rodgers exit and judge him on his 30 months as manager you can't fail to be impressed and that's why I think you should be excited about him coming back because Brendan knows that there's one or two fans that are not having him and he gets that he understands why that's the case so there's that extra determination from him and that extra fire in his belly. He's up for this, Paul. Mm-hmm. Brendan Rodgers is up for this. 
and it's because of some of the comments that Paul's made there and he's made them very well he's made them very sure. uh, fairly but Brendan Rodgers wants to go do, do really well for those reasons that Paul's mentioned Paul this is what he did say he was asked is he apprehensive about coming back yeah no, there's no apprehension you know I, I made a decision to, to leave which uh, I said before I didn't regret you know Celtic done well after I left you know I had a good spell at, uh, at Leicester and uh, we won some trophies so I come, I come back. You know, I've had a great support from the Celtic supporters. That listen, you won't always get uh, everyone on side, but I think my experience in life tells me that uh, people forgive when it suits, and they forget when it's convenient. And uh, my job purely is to just concentrate the priorities, the players and the staff, making sure that we can be the best that we can be in order to help the supporters. Uh, dream again and that's that's what I achieve and listen I'm pretty sure in the first time I was here there wasn't everyone was behind me and it'll probably be the same here but as long as everyone supports the team and uh, and gives them everything which they normally do at Celtic then uh, hopefully we can have a great season again Paul we hear what you're saying and as Mark says Brendan Rodgers knows this are you looking forward to the season? Yeah I, I'm looking forward to the season totally looking forward to the season and that that's the thing. I'm trying to kind of strip back any kind of disappointment I had when, when he left sure. and think about his kind of his credentials. And, and he, he was the best guy for the job. He is the best guy for the job that was available. He's a big name. He's a he's a he's a bigger name than Ange Postecoglou. Mm. Uh, but it, it's just the whole shift from uh, at the end up. I mean, everybody hung and Ange's every word. As they did in Brendan Rodgers yeah. the first time round, but he's coming to a kind of different environment. Now, I hope the environment works out better. I think that maybe it does, keeps, it does teach the supporters a wee bit of a lesson. Yeah, maybe it makes you right. grow up a wee bit. You don't be so emotionally involved. The guy's in doing a job. If the guy goes in, if Brendan Rodgers comes in, makes us better, and I think in Europe's a big thing, mm -hmm. I'll be totally delighted. I'll kind of care less. He's, Everybody makes mistakes. It was a mistake he made. No, sure. I'm not interested. I'm do I hear he's sorry, and I don't want to hear anything like that. But as long as it makes us better, I'll be delighted. Paul, that's a really good call, and you're really honest. And he said, Brendan Rodgers said he's not apologising or whatever. He doesn't regret going. No, no, no should he? No, he did. He made, a, he made and, a professional decision. And here's the thing, Mark: the fact that you, you know all the kids that loved uh, Ange and Jota and all that, they have gone. Yeah. And, and it's a reality and yeah. that maybe helps Brendan Rodgers as well okay it, it was does, February right. time it this, does. this made a difference but I know kids yeah. are going alright oh, yeah. Ange I'm has a, gone yeah and I think as well a lot of supporters uh, uh, you know when Ange fronted the, the season ticket campaign yeah. and they, they yeah. thought oh that's it he's definitely <laughs> staying he's no good and then he's away and it I just know. goes to show and Paul you'll know it now yeah. Brendan Rodgers but I think he most with Ange Postecoglou these guys are here to do a job mm -hmm. they're professionals and if they get a better opportunity what they feel and, and, and we all know as well very, very rarely that they'll leave Celtic to go to a bigger club, but they can go to a bigger league and they can quadruple or five, yeah. six times their salary. And we've just got to accept that's a fact of life and a lot of them want to do it and they shouldn't be criticised for doing that. Eusebi's must be gutted. Giovanni's away <laughs> and so is Ange. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! This is Paul Cooney with Mark Guidi. Listen, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's made the switch. Thousands of you. And that's year four started yesterday, Mark. Yeah, you were here right really? from the beginning. Oh, no, you made the switch as well. That's right. <laughs> no, genuinely, you did. Uh, from some great people there as well. But thank you. So many people yeah. are making the switch. So we're on every night from five and more to come on the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tomorrow night, John Hartson and Barry Ferguson will be here. Good light and up then, strong. Yeah, Thursday, Stephen McGinn will be here along with Peter Grant and Andy Walker is joining us, I think, with Barry on Wednesday. And you'll be back. We're back to normal Monday as well. I'll be strange, but yeah. working again, having the double uh, up, pun that's yeah. been good. Um, the, 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 it flies in, a lot of good calls, but you can just tell tonight, Paul, the calls that are coming oh. in, Celtic yep. fans, the points with the Rangers fans, everybody's really excited. And you think on Monday night we're going to have plenty to talk about from what happened on Saturday and Sunday. And of course, you'll be building up a Rangers Champions League qualifier, 30 to 40 million quid on yep. the line for Rangers. Yep. Absolutely massive for Michael Beale and the players and the supporters. And James, exactly what I was about to say. You know, we've teamed up, Mark, with Alea. Uh, the brand new sports bar 
and we're going to give you the chance to win £250. So on Alan on Friday, they won £200. So just go to thisisgo.co.uk and register and you could be going to the new bar, which is going to be opened up from 6pm to 6am. So <laughs> it's a kind of early night for you. <laughs> it's a 12 hour shift. Indeed, That's not bad. Yeah. Take you back to Washington. No, of course you were there. I'm sure it wasn't. But it'll be great. And then on match days, it'll open up, you know, if the game's at three, it'll be on beforehand or whatever. So the Alea Sports Bar relaunched down by the Clyde said we remember we yep. remember it well so that'll yep. be magnificent £250 it could be you uh, this Friday speaking to Barry and uh, Andy so this is go.co.uk quite a few people coming on there about Brendan Rogers and saying it's going to be interesting tonight you know we heard Paul a little while ago and he, he put his points very well praised Brendan Rogers but you can tell that I haven't heard that for a while actually how gutted people were at the time and I sense that with Ange having gone albeit that they loved Ange but, and he was there till the end of the season but he has gone and maybe people realise that it's a yeah. business and Jota away to the Middle East and you know yeah. nobody would have expected that do you think I just listened to what you said earlier on Conor Goldson is there a chance that Stephen Gerrard will come in for the big defender but there's certainly there's, there's been one or two things doing the rounds um, about the, the um, you know Stephen Gerrard being interested in taking Conor Goldson to, to Etifat whether it's it's you know it's on the money um, or not Paul but certainly if you know if Stephen Gerrard fancies Conor Goldson then you know as, as we know with the Saudi Arabian clubs money's no object pretty much nine players out of ten unless it's killing Mbappe nine players out of ten if you want them y y you get them and for players it's um you know, it's it's real life changing, um, life changing money. It's absolutely massive, isn't it? So Jota has gone, and we've seen so many others. Doesn't look as though Mbappe's going to be there. And what about Harry Kane? What's the latest? So there's a meeting yesterday. Daniel Levy, along with the Bayern uh, directors, but Levy's still saying he wants a hundred million. And I mean, it appears to be Bayern Munich are the only club um, yeah. in town. Uh, you know, there's certainly been talks behind the scenes. There's no doubt about that with Bayern Munich. And Harry Kane's representatives, there seems to be uh, a willingness from Harry Kane to, to go and try the, the Bundesliga. Uh, and remember as well about, about Harry Kane, Paul, for all he's, he's brilliant and he is. I mean, he's outstanding and he's a captain of England. Um, I don't know if Ange Postacoglu's decided on a new um, captain yet with Hugo Lloris um, mm -hmm. leaving the club, but um, he's never won a, a, any silverware, never won anything. It's in his career, you know, it is yeah. anyway. He's, yeah. And I know there's a goal scoring record that he'd have in mind, you know, yes. to beat Alan Shearer's, but he could go to Munich for a couple of years mm -hmm. and come back. But ultimately, you know, he's not the kind of guy who think, oh, it's all about me and I just want to beat that goal record. No, he wants to look back in his career first and foremost, I would say, well, I won the Champions League mm -hmm. or I won a league title or, or whatever it may be. And yeah. I happened to beat Alan, you know, I scored 300 goals, whatever it may be. Um, but I think for Ange Postecoglou, Paul, bearing in mind that their seasons, um, 11 days away he'll, he'll want a decision quickly he won't, he won't want this uh, rolling on and he'll want to know what his money is so that he knows what he can spend and what kind of players that he can go for because replacing Harry Kane you know there's there's 25 goals gone not easy to, to, to replace him we talked about the Rangers players that have come in during the summer so what about Celtic who'll be in action tonight against Athletic Bilbao at 7.30, the kick-off, the James Forrest testimonial match. So Navrocki, or Navrotsky, I think it's going to be, who's come in the centre-back from Legia Warsaw. Uh, Thiago, Auden Holm, the central midfielder. Yeah. Um, Yang, and we saw him uh, briefly at uh, the weekend. Uh, and Kwon, the two of them came late last week from um, Asia. Uh, Tilio, Marco Tilio, maybe see him tonight. And Iwata converting the loan into a signing. Yeah, I mean, it's so, more than 10 million quid Celtic yeah, spent in the summer, yeah. Paul, you know, and um, you know five players or so. So they've certainly spent money. Obviously, they've got the Jota uh, money in. Remember, they had to give uh, a sell-on fee to uh, back to Benfica um, for that. But as we know, Paul, um, with Celtic's you know, set of accounts and, and Champions League one in the next set of accounts to come, Celtic are, are in a an incredibly... Um, fortunate financial position and credit to everyone at the club for um, for that and that's why for Brendan Rodgers if he and the recruitment staff spot a player that they think you know what and it could be a goalkeeper yeah. could be a number nine could be a sentiment whatever it may be they've got the financial muscle to go and make it happen they can go and do a 10 million pound deal and give a player 50 grand a week yeah. not saying they're going to do it but, they could. but the option is there for me to do it and that puts them at a completely different level mm -hmm from Rangers and every other club in this country and it's credit to Celtic for that they should be congratulated for putting themselves in such a strong and healthy position Brendan Rogers has been speaking how does he feel about the preparations? Yeah, it's been a really good preparation for us we've obviously got 
one more week to go, and then uh, it really matters next next Saturday. So, uh, yeah, it's I think everything that you know I've done in my last time here is all in the past. It's all in concrete what we achieved, which was great. But uh, you know, I've got a real determination now and to to have another really successful spell here, and and of course the the foundations of that we've looked to put in place over the preseason. Mark Guido, you said you think he's more determined than yeah. ever. Because yeah. he's got, listen, Absolutely. he did brilliantly at Leicester and then he didn't get any money last summer and all the rest of it. But he's got something, maybe not to prove, but he will want to show people in England and elsewhere that you know he's better than what happened late last season. Yeah. And for the Celtic fans, he wants to win them back. Paul, you, you look at his record, he, you know, I, I don't, I've not, he must have more than 600 games mm-hmm. as a first team yeah. That's why I say he's an upgrade on, on Ange Postecoglou. He nearly took he nearly took Liverpool yeah. in the league title sure. as, as what a thirty eight year old yeah. comes to Celtic, wipes the floor mm. with Scottish football, absolutely wipes the floor. Goes down to Leicester, wins an FA Cup, takes him with a game or two of top four. And I know that Leicester won the title under sure. Ranieri in two thousand and sixteen, but you look at his his, his achievements. Um, he's that's why he's he's an outstanding manager. Still only fifty years old. And he's coming back and he's absolutely on it. He knows everything that's going on. A few of the Celtic supporters only have them because of the way he left the club. And that's fine. That's up to them. So that's why he's, he's got that extra... Day. That's why Callum McGregor and the players of what before are absolutely buzzing that he's back. They're loving it. I don't think we're going to hear you until the season starts. So I need to ask you, who do you think is going to win the title? Is it too early to say? Do you want to wait till the end of the window? I'm just giving you a chance because I'm throwing it at you. But what are the headlines? What do you expect to happen? Because I'm well, also going to Celtic's ask Celtic's you... a team to beat by a distance. For me, Celtic, um, yeah, I know they've lost Jota, etc. Et but for me, um, Celtic's the, the, the team to beat. And it's going to take something exceptional, absolutely exceptional from Rangers to overturn Celtic. But right now, for me, it's Celtic. And who do you worry about for the bottom of the table? And there's contenders already. I mean, St. Johnson. Yeah, St. Johnson have got yeah. off to a, a terrible start, you know, losing to United, losing to Stenhouse Muir, um, losing to Stirling Albion, totally um, unacceptable. So Stephen McLean will know he need to get things going. He's, he's, a, he's a good young manager, Paul, wouldn't rule him um, out. But I think you take away Celtic and Rangers. And, yeah. and to be honest, see the other 10, Paul. Anything can happen. It, it really can. You know, Aberdeen could get dragged into it, into the bottom six because they've got European football. Hearts could get dragged into it. Um, new management team. Hibs could get dragged into it. Lee Johnson, shaky spells. So, listen, see the other 10. Anything could happen. And Hearts, of course, have got this strange uh, situation with the, the dual manager or a manager and, and also because... That really works, Paul. It's not going to work, That really it? works. Yeah, we'll I, I, we'll you know, happens, yeah. and I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm surprised at the, the experience and the hierarchy mm. at Hearts that, 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 that they've gone down. There's now maybe maybe behind the scenes it's very clear, you know, who the who the gaffer is, but we're certainly not getting that impression. And, and when you've got that confusion, it only takes one or two bad results, and the spotlight really gets thrown on you. People will be watching uh, on Saturday because there's no major games in England. They start after us, yeah. so it's a big chance, isn't it? Big crowd, you know, watching Sky, yeah. watching Celtic against Ross County, Brilliant and then Kilmarnock against Rangers. Great, Let's hope great, for great for games. Yeah, yeah, great for our, our uh, Premier League to to open uh, that way. Really exciting, um, Paul Celtic at lunchtime. You've got your three games in between, including St. Johnson uh, against Hearts. You've got Dundee back up, new manager Tony Doherty, and then you've got Hibs St. Mirren on Sunday afternoon and Kilmarnock Rangers at tea time on Saturday. That is an absolute belter. Mark, thank you so much. Cheers, Paul. Tomorrow night, we're back five until seven. Barry Ferguson, myself, Paul Cooney, and John Hartson. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. Crofty and Grado hear the stories behind some of Glasgow's best loved restaurants. Frankie Boyle comes in quite often. Kevin Bridges, uh, he comes in match days. Calvin Harris is given here for breakfast. Crofty samples the vegan options. Uh, do you know what? I'm pretty excited about that. Seaweed? Are you allowed seaweed? I'm allowed seaweed. Uh. <laughs> a 
and Grado samples everything else. See your, your haggis nips and tatties? Oh. I was told this haggis gets made yeah. on yeah, the yeah. premises. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Before the ultimate test, the Dougie bag. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 4 at Stravagan is available now. Search for Rate the Plate wherever you get your podcast with Glasgow Taxis. Trusted by the people of Glasgow for over 59 years.